Thank you. It's the first frame. Ryan did to break. Well, our MC said, let's introduce the players into the ring. Now, our previous match, to use a, a boxing analogy, would have been one on points. I think we might see a few more hefty blows in this one. And Alan McManus, that's history repeating itself because when these two played in the World Grand Prix final here on RTV back in the tail end of last season, Hawkins was knocking in that kind of pot for fun. He played brilliantly. Yeah, I remember that well, the, um, the final over in Preston. For seven or eight frames of that first session, as, as good as anyone can play this game. Looking for a similar start today, Barry Hawkins. He's not been in the best of form so far this season. Four. Five. You're totally correct, Alan, in that. He and Judd Trump, representing England, did get to the final of the World Cup, losing 4-3 to, to China. Ding Jinwei and Liang Wenbo, but individually, so far the 2017-18 season for Hawkins has oh. been a washout. Extraordinarily, given how good we know he can be, he hasn't been passed the last 32. Arrived at that point in the China Championship. Other than that, early exits everywhere. Quite put that last black in the middle of the pocket. And so I left this almost half ball red. Should get it. 21. <coughs> Throughout his career, Barry Hawkins. There's always been peaks and troughs in form. And when he's in the groove, he is formidable. The kind of player who just needs a couple of good victories to boost confidence, and he's off and running. Yes. 27. I think he's actually looking he can play for pink or black here I think he's looking at maybe even play for the pink in the same pocket yeah punched around a couple of cushions positionally it's better but he feels he's had a big 35. bounce
Well, this is just the kind of start that all of these players crave. A nice chance right at the beginning of the match to get the arm going and to strike and stamp your authority. Yeah, and just, you know, Barry's coming out round. He's interested in the pink. Looks like he could play for it from this red. In actual fact, pot in this red, he could play for both pink and black. 41. Low pink, bring the reds into play. Forty-two. Yeah, deciding to bide his time. Maybe those two reds around the pink spot will both go. Right middle or left corner. Yeah, now he's interested in the pink this time. Fifty seven. No need to play it. If the other red, the two red I spoke about, if, if they both go, which you can see there it will do, so he can play back for blue, deciding to stay for pink. I say no need to bring reds into play. This is a risk, not guaranteed to be on one. Well, from here, it's hard to imagine he won't win the frame at this visit. And if he does, that will constitute 64. the perfect intro to the match. Shows you how important the break off is at this level, doesn't it? Ryan Day got a decent cue ball, but unfortunately 72. left that half ball red. And he's sat in his chair ever since. Wanted a slightly fuller contact on that red to hold for others. Still has a pot, but it's academic anyway. The frame is gone. Well, should this red go in, it's going to be a higher break 84. than anything we saw in the match preceding this. 85. Yeah, and a break around the, the mid-130s. I don't think I'll win the high break prize at the end of the week, but I would set a decent target. Ninety-two. Don't know whether Barry Hawkins will be on Ryan Day's Christmas card <laughs> list this year when you consider that in that World Grand Prix final, Hawkins on the way to a 9-3 lead.
compiled five centuries. More than a touch of deja vu here. 97. 98. One scoring visit, one century from Hawkins. One hundred and five. One hundred and eight. A pity. No total clearance. But what a start from Barry Hawkins. The Hawk swoops immediately. He leads by one frame to zero. Being of champions. Barry Hawkins to break. Barry Hawkins qualified as the World Grand Prix kingpin. His opponent today, Ryan Day, well, he won the Riga Masters right at the start of the current season. And by doing so, rid himself of the unwanted tag of being arguably the best player never to have won a world ranking event. They can't say that about him now. Yeah, he's new to the Winners and closer Ryan Day's also got a new cue in his hands. He's only had it a couple of weeks prior to his first match in Da Ching last week in China. He only used it for two days. And you see it, nice piece of wood as well. Almost like a caber. <laughs> Big guy, Ryan. Yes, the cue that got him here, i.e. the one that he won the Riga Masters with, was very unfortunately smashed en route to the World Six Reds Championship, or might have been on the way back, but either way, it was the same result. Angst for the Welshman. loose. He's given Barry Hawkins almost a, a free go at this red. Only red he can leave will be the one he's playing. You know, as the ball was going towards the pocket, I was thinking this is going the opposite way to what it should do, i.e. towards the right-hand jaw. Now we'll take a look at this. I think it definitely went up a little. I really do. One. So Hawkins, shaken by that. And now Day has got a really good chance to make his own impression. If you place an awful lot of store in their head-to-head -head meetings in the past, you might fancy Day to win this match. He leads 9-6 overall. And he actually beat Hawkins 4-3 in the second round of the Riga Masters in Latvia, which was the, Ten. the tournament he went on to win. 
Made a century break, in fact, in the decider. Eleven. Yeah, that's not ideal. He just looks the wrong side of straight in this black. This will take a nice piece of cue you know, on that loose red. to force the stun. So he was just too straight on it. And it looks in, like end of break. 18. He may be, as I mentioned, that new cue, the, the deep screw with, with side to get on the red. He's just maybe not comfortable with that type of shot yet. It may be the reason why he tried the force and stun. Again, that shot was played with yeah, a right hand side 18. and miss hit at the type of shot that can go wrong. The type of shot that actually presents itself with when you we are using the new cue, that's what seems to happen. Anyway, out of nothing. Barry Hawkins what? has another chance. Barry Hawkins won. Who was in ours, but not the desired contact really with the bunch. Just flicked off them, and in the end, the side on the cue ball, it was inevitable. It almost was sucked into the pocket. Sixteen. Seventeen. Type of shot Ryan's normally very good at, gets a lot of action on the ball. He didn't play the cannon, mind you. Oh, he's so fortunate. He holds his hand up. And the reason for that, he potted it in the thin side. Again, maybe just the cue. When you play it a shot with extreme bottom or top or side, you just tend to lose accuracy. He's gotten away with one. Another one of the players that we're going to see this week as well, Ryan Day, is using this new chalk that the players have been using. The theory is that it reduces kicks and bounces. There's nothing, you see it, it's round as well, it's not square. 28. I used to see it. There's something I'm going to keep a close eye on 
this week. Just take a note of which players are using it. 29. Let's see how the cue ball behaves. Well, I don't know whether it's coincidence or not, Alan, but it seems to me as though over the last several tournaments, fewer kicks, fewer bounces. Would you agree? Yeah, I would. In fact, all season, I think that the tables have, have behaved better, certainly from the last couple of seasons. Personally, I think kicks are just part of the game that, unfortunately, you're never going to get rid of, but it's bouncing that frustrates... 36. You know, the cue ball bounces too much. That's what frustrates players more than anything. But the tables That's have been seven. good that way in the main this season. Dane, meanwhile, close to the point of winning this frame. This needs the red. 42. 43. Well, the first two frames in this match are chalk and cheese compared with Hamilton Ding. The only common factor, they've been shared. 50. 51. Such a stylish player, Ryan Day. Always has been. I must be honest, 59. I was really pleased when he won in Riga because it always seemed to me a travesty that he never won a ranking title. 64. And so it just 71. remains to be seen whether Day can reply to Hawkins' century in the first frame with one of his own in the second. 72. 76. 78. 81 85 90 96. 96. It's a double century start. Both players contributing to a very high standard. Barry Hawkins and Ryan Day. 1 1. Between Barry Thank Hawkins you. and Ryan Day. Frame 3. Ryan Day to break. And there's nothing to suggest it won't continue. This is a tough safety, Barry Hawkins. 
He just has to try and avoid a bulk colour because he's leaving that other red. And he's found the gap nicely. Good shot, that. Ryan Day is going to have the same problem. No shot to nothing. thinking is it worth leaving the cue ball in the black cushion that's maybe what he's coming around to look at so it's a high tar of difficulty if he plays the, the normal safety shot in fact I think he's taking one on round the back of the red and black here that was all caused that problem. If he played this the normal safety, he had to avoid catching a bulk colour or leave Barry the red to left corner. Got himself in a bit of a tiz there. He's not left anything easy. Well, he had a lovely little bit of luck in the previous frame, developing a red over to the middle pocket, which he didn't intend. And that's equally fortunate. A little bit of check in this safety. Two cushions with a cue ball thin. There you go, bit of check. Plenty cover on the right side of the table. Not that difficult a shot, that, from Barry Hawkins, but he's executed it to perfection. Three ball plant aiming. So they're going to be close to the pocket or the red that's over the right corner. But again, be playing the cue ball similar to where it is now. Or even better, he's covered the left side. No obvious return to bolt for Barry this time. Barry Hawkins thinking here almost playing well not playing in and off but I don't know if he can I don't think the path's there perhaps it is cushion first no he's trusting the luck here cue ball back into bulk Didn't quite get hold of it. And the way the first couple of frames went, as Phil mentioned, this is actually a big shot now, especially the way the balls are. Normally, 9 out of 10, this type of shot. He did really well there, Ryan Day, because the shot itself was quite a tester, especially where the brown was, just 
distracting him slightly. Now normally when he's in stride this is meat and drink. He's a really good scorer. Eight. Although Hawkins has been a professional Nine. for three years more than Day, even though Hawkins is higher ranked, has had more success. Day's had far more centuries. Three hundred and one in professional competition against two hundred and forty two for Hawkins. Sixteen. Seventeen. As he looks confident around the each shot he's playing. He's just getting behind it, standing, having a look, a quick look that is. And he's getting down and playing it. There's no messing around, looking at things that aren't there. Once again. Twenty-four. On the line of it and straight in. Not overthinking. Twenty-five. Well, the Rico Arena certainly isn't an alien venue to Ryan Day. We played the Championship League here as well early in the year, 32. behind closed doors, as it were. And unbelievably, in last year's Championship League, here he played 53 best of five frame 33. matches. He actually lost in the final of the overall winners group to the eventual winner of the, the tournament, John Higgins. Yeah, that'll sharpen you up, won't it? 53 matches. Yeah, he just doesn't want to play any cannons here, Ryan, but he's forced into it. It's just a case of which cannon can he play. It almost guarantees being on a red. Oh, that'll do nicely. And when you're playing well, those little cannons just seem to work out properly. 38. Simple red, choice of pink or black to follow. Six. Four. Not the best, that. Pressure on this. Hence the hesitation. I think that's sensible. Showing good experience there. Just taking an extra five or ten seconds. Good thing he can stun through the little gap with a cue ball. Five. Little tricks of the trade that these players have. They get to 40, 50, faced with a little maybe iffy shot. As I say, just take another five or ten seconds to execute. And he's now set fair. Six red colour two. red. It'll be 2 1 the Welshman. 
70. Seventy-one. Well, that was frame ball. With the addition of the black, the frame will be very much in the bag. Seventy-eight. Seventy-nine. Something of a dull contact. Would have expected to screw back a little more than that. Well, I think if you're hitting the balls into these far jaws at quiet pace, they're quite friendly. Just 87. A possible 94. 145 break on for day here. Five. Three frames, three centuries. Cracking One stuff. And two. One hundred and three. Showing my age, Alan. Now I can remember when. Day's fellow Welshman, Doug Manjoy, had the record break of the Crucible with a 145. Yes, against this fellow Welshman, Ray Stevens. Uh, Ray Stevens, Ray Reardon, sorry. 110. No 145, oh, but. Ryan right, Day's break of 110, and more than sufficient to turn a 1-0 deficit into a 2-1 lead. First here in Cardiff. For Barry Thank Hawkins, you. it's now Thanks a matter of trying to get back onto level terms. Barry Hawkins to break. Because, Alan, if it does go 3-1, that's a crisis. Set the wrong red there, Ryan Day. <coughs> and he's given Barry Hawkins an excellent opening. Didn't really look like that gap was on, not from that picture. Thing playing this shot, the red that he's cannon is probably going to stay where it is. Fortunately, it just went above the spot. I think the black is going to be in the in the clear as well as the red. Actually, that was well controlled, Eight. Barry Hawkins. This is now an excellent chance. Nine.
Thank you. Fifteen. Similar to 16. that first frame, actually. A nice break that Barry made. The pink has gone very similar position in the back of the cluster. You see it there. A couple of frames ago, it was into the other corner, but it's similar situation here. He may use that pink. 23. Should he get the chance? In fact, he's playing for it this time. Well, the cue ball is very close to the red, but from Hawkins's body language, everything's OK. Indeed, it is. There you can see. And this is another peach of a chance. Funny, isn't it? When our first match this afternoon, it probably would have landed in nothing. <laughs> when it's to and in front, it. and it's good stuff from both players. You go into packs, you just seem to land nice, don't you? OK, the pink. Might be tied up. Thirty one. Yeah, the thing you won't be doing here is playing any sort of cannon. You just find a little gap. I think he wants to play for the two reds together to left middle. You can play for those and avoid a cannon. He'd be trusting the cushion in playing that shot. Always think playing that type of shot. Almost play for a high black into the left corner. Oh, he's got the cannon and it's gone wrong. It was just the doubt in the mind that created that, I think. OK, he executed it poorly, but he was just worried. It's such a big gap to play through. Going back to that shot, playing through the little gap, and if he'd mentally almost play for a high black to left corner, he'd have almost automatically been on the two reds to left middle. It's not easy to talk yourself into playing it that way, but sometimes Very it does help. 36. Every player, though, has a different method, a different, different thought process. Ryan Day's shaping up here, he's taking this on. Play it as a half shot to nothing. Fall. And again, he's hit the wrong ball, he's just hit his cue. Barry Hawkins, four. Well, both of those shots, I think, Alan, symptomatic of a man with a new cue. Fall. The throw is just totally different. Yeah, absolutely, Felt. He was playing with extreme left-hand side. Bending the cue ball, he just completely... Had it off kilter. One. And the little flick to open up the pink. A real bonus for Hawkins. Chance number two. After this, it should be 2 2. Hawkins one. Quite possibly that could be one of the biggest moments of the match. Yeah, and th was there movement there? Yeah, I think that was a twitch. I have to be honest. It just detected tension and maybe, just maybe, that's a symptom of the pressure that Ryan Day's got him under. The way the Reds are, I'll be expecting Ryan Day to score heavy. Possibly win the frame. One. I always talk about 
sending those silent messages to your opponent. Ryan Day's sent a couple already in this match. It looks like Barry Hawkins got the memo because... I see, I thought that was a little twitch by Barry. Seven. Yeah, red to left middle. Leaving blue to right corner, I think's the call here. You can maybe play it. Well, maybe just the angle's not there, having to play for a choice of pink or black. He well, feels it is. That's good confident thinking Eight. that. Get the blue back in the spot. And taking this well forward, getting the blue on the spot, could be of real benefit when it comes to floating in the cue ball 13. behind the red on the yeah. right-hand side cushion right at the end. The last red exhausted. Yeah, good call, Phil. It's options, isn't it? That's what it's all about, break building. This is where a snooker player earns their corn. A couple of tons already in the match, but this is every bit, if not more important. You'll already just be thinking about that red that Phil was talking about, the right side cushion. A couple of plans in mind. 29. Switch it off, please. Thirty-six. Oh, I'll tell you what, that was a great shot. Obviously, the pot was a sitter, but the cue ball, he's put it 42. on a sixpence. <laughs> It almost guarantees him decent position in the next red. That's how good that shot was. Thank you. 43. Again. Just a wee bit awkward on the pink. Playing with plenty of confidence, mind you. I'd fancy him playing this off a couple of cushions. You see that red will pass to the green pocket. That might come into play. Oh, he's missed it on the thick side. As I say it now, will the pink cover it? Ryan Day, 43. the green pocket. <laughs> well, disappointed to leave the table, but at least he's wide back in the frame. As you 
you said earlier, Phil, that blue came in handy, being on the spot for attacking this last red. He can't drop on it, mind you. It'll be a force and stun in behind it. No, that's not ideal. Yes, the position of the red, much better Six. for a right-hander than a lefty. Yeah, I think just the very fact that Barry Hawkins is a lefty, I think he should have tried to move that red. He's excellent with the rest, but if he was to take the pot on here, it's no better than 50-50. I think he's playing the safety sensibly. Thank you. Barry Hawkins, six. Such a big frame, and where the colours are, you get the feeling Whoever makes the first mistake on the last red could pay dearly. Oh, that little brush on the green has meant he's put the red right over the middle. But for brushing the green, the red would have gone past the middle pocket. That's why he's having a little chuckle at himself. Incorrect side of the blue, though. Now, this is the, the rub on the green that Alan was talking about. No applause, but under pressure, that was really nicely played. Yeah, very good. You fool well. It was frame ball. He's regained his composure Lovely. here just at the, in the nick of time, Barry Hawkins. Given the blue he's left himself, Hawkins will be really relieved. He's 19 in front with 18 on. One, two. One to six and frame. Very well. Ryan Day will be irritated. He missed the pink off its spot. He then malfunctioned on a safety shot. It means the difference between. 3-1 and 2-2. Two, two. Locked together at 2-2 two, two in this last 16 match in the Champion of Champions. The winner to play, Anthony Hamilton, Thank in the best you. of 11 frame quarterfinal this evening. Ryan did break. Almost the exact same break off as two frames ago. Ryan Day's covered the red to left corner. Barry Hawkins said before he's concerned here about finding the gap in between the bulk colours and playing this. He got it a bit thick in this occasion, he's been fortunate. He's pushed the red across. Means Ryan can't take it on. I always think with this type of shot, try and can in the brown. The theory behind it is if you miss the brown on the left hand side, you can get in behind the brown. If you miss it in the right hand side, you can get in behind the green. Once again, nope. This is a red near the right corner. But what can Barry Hawkins do with the cue ball? One. 
I think he's just OK. I thought for a moment the cue ball might have travelled a tad too far, but I think he can get through to the black. Superb Eight. piece of cueing. Those blacks are tricky. Now, his choices here power, follow through, or deep screw off them for black into the same pocket, possibly pink to right middle. He's going deep on the cue ball. So just watch the cue ball here. Oh, fabulous. Brilliant shot. Nine. Wow, he got some stuff on that. 16. Yeah, did he ever? I think he actually... Quite a lively bounce. That red will just go. Maybe doesn't have all the pocket to aim at. And that was the problem. The near jaws are harsh. Yeah, didn't quite have all the pocket to him at. Tried to slip it in off the left jaw. And this isn't very inviting. I don't think he'll take the red on the left corner. He's eyeing it up, but a bit of kidology going on there. That's a bluff. No chance that he'll take that on. <coughs> That's the kind of move he's World Cup partner this year. Mark Williams used to do, get down to play a shot. You just knew he wasn't going to take it. <laughs> get his opponent's hopes up and then play the correct shot. Mark was always a great one as well for shaking his head giving the impression a ball wouldn't pot, and then he'd get down and knock it in sweet as a nut. Yeah, human moves. That was the saying, wasn't it? And the colour of money, Paul Newman. A lot of this game, that's what it's about. Of course, you need to have the ability to knock the balls in, but all the little tricks of the trade going on out there. This is clumsy, it's fiery the white. In and out of bulk with the cue ball past the blue spot. Normally a recipe for disaster. Not so in this case. He's covered everything. Now, fairly straightforward for Ryan Day to put the Ball up near bag five, the green bag. But it's not one red, it's two reds he has to cover. This red just above and to the right of the black, the one he's playing here, he's probably trying to shift the red near the corner. I don't think the red will pass. Yeah, in fact, I think he played a speculative plant. Plant to nothing. 
He's left a little gap, I think. Well, he has. He's nodding his head. That tells you. A little gap. A red. Near the black cushion, near the pocket. He can get through to that. The natural angle, though, is probably going to cannon the red above it. So this is a big shot now. Pot all important. Barry Hawkins won. Day leaping from his chair. Delighted to be back to the table so quickly. One. Cue balls just run awkwardly on, though. Yeah, I think he's just about on it, isn't he? He can't maybe play playing ball, but actually these standard of players would naturally play this with a bit of right hand side anyway, just to throw the pot in. Over the years, Day's produced some really good snooker against Barry Hawkins. Their first ever meeting in a qualifier for the World That's Championship it. in the year 2000. Day beat him 10-1. And Day's beaten him all kinds of ways. Perhaps the most satisfying was at the German Masters in 2014 when he won 5-4 from 4-1 down. Sixteen. On a couple of occasions, Day has won matches against Hawkins, making a couple of century breaks. Six. Twenty-seven. So often in this match, we've seen players have wonderful scoring chances, and this is another. Thirty-five. He 
doesn't really want to drop this in, so force the play a little cannon. Odds on to be on a red, and that'll do nicely. Scoreboard check. 25 the lead. Four. Easier of the reds. More than enough. 43. Well, in the previous frame, he made a 43 break and missed a pink off its spot into this pocket. That was a lot easier, though, that shot. And now you can't help but feel he's going to regain the lead. 49. 50. Good tussle, this Alan. Yeah, good match. Fifty-six. The Rico Arena today thought this would be a four-two, four-three either way. Fifty-seven. They're almost showing off to each other. The first two or three frames, but now it's down to the business end of the match. Day forty-six ahead already. So this is frame ball. 63. 64. Can he make his third century of the match? 71. 72. century but a third frame on the board for him a break of 79 it was in the end Ryan Day is back in front he leads Barry Hawkins 3-2 Barry Hawkins break Barry Hawkins knows he has to win the last couple of frames to stay alive Just a reminder, if you're joining us right now, that the winner of this will play tonight in the quarterfinals against Anthony Hamilton, who surprisingly defeated Ding Chun Wei 4-2 in our first match this afternoon. And I don't think he's covered the red to right corner. And eight type of shot. The top players knock in what seems like more often than not. How confident is he in playing it though? Chance of leaving the red above it should he miss it. exactly what he has done but I did think it was a natural angle to play for a bulk colour there and Barry Hawkins played for blue to left middle probably thinking the only red he can leave is the one he's playing 
having missed it thick. Cue ball's not travelled. Good chance, Ryan Day. a good chance it's certainly not that yet needs to get rid of that red just below the cue ball there and playing this black wants to play it in such a way he's guaranteed to be on the red one thing we must point out he's pot success rate Eight. at the moment and bear in mind we're into frame six now today's pot success rate 95 percent On the overwhelming majority of occasions, Nine. that gets the job done. And the cruel irony is that Barry Hawkins' pot success rate is 88% at the moment, which is superior to both Ding and Hamilton from earlier on today. I think that's one of the cruel natures of professional snooker, Alan. You can play reasonably well and lose, and you can play below your best and win. Yes, and sometimes when you're out of form, certainly out of form as far as winning matches like Barry Hawkins is right now, compared with the amount of matches he normally wins, over a period of time. It's typical that your opponent plays as well as Ryan Day has done. Twenty-five. And this is now not quite a chance to put the frame and match away just yet, but at the very least get a command and lead. Again, just signs of when a player's playing well. He played for a choice of two reds, but he's landed on 32. the red to right middle. Absolutely perfect angle. Almost leave the black wherever he likes. Quite deliberately played 33. low in it. So, key shot now coming up. The two reds nearest the black, the two reds together, just canning the right hand one and a little soft screw off it. There you see it. Perfectly played. Uh, is he thinking maximum Ryan Day? I think sensibly he's reneging on it. He's going back up for the blue. Almost to just put it out of his mind. He wants to win the match first and foremost. 41. When you're one frame away from victory and you've got a chance at the table like this with the reds and the colours all there, the heart must be a flutter. Particularly in a tournament 44. of this nature, which oozes prestige. Incorrect side of the blue, and so while this pot is absolutely routine, the next one is a little more pressure. Fifty-one. 
57. I think this is what's known as being in the zone, Ryan Day. This is as good as a performance I think as I've ever seen from the big Welshman. He's been outstanding in every department. And just to reiterate, using a cue he's had for only a couple of weeks. That makes it even more remarkable. 63. He's in that zone, almost trance-like state. You can see those eyes. Dark eyes of his, never, never taken his eyes off the job in hand, 64. the table, and this is match ball. No positional complexity, no need. 71. And it looks as though the dismal season of Barry Hawkins is going to continue. Well, that Ryan would have been 71. the exclamation mark, as it is, still just a, a ray of hope for Hawkins. Yeah, still a glimmer. Trick is though, that red by the pink is the one he'll probably be leaving to last. So he's going to have to deal with the one down the cushion sooner rather than later, and that's not ideal if he's going to play it this time. Eight. That's the cue ball there by a good 18 inches. I think what you can say also, I think just to add to your point, Phil, about Ryan Day's form today, I think anything difficult and at distance, he looks like he could miss it, but in close, he looks absolutely bang on form going forward. That is if he goes ahead and wins this match and plays the little group final against Anthony Hamilton later. Don't want to give him too many easy chances, that is for sure. See in close. It's been a brilliant performance. This isn't close, it's the length of the table, but it should be potted. One. And that should be that. Hawkins has that sinking feeling. Ryan Day, no doubt delighted. Seven. Eight.
Virgin. Brexit 103, 110, 79, 71. Ryan Day impressively beats Barry Hawkins. It's been Ryan's day. The question is, will it be his night?